Hello, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this film is going to be a last film in our series on how to build that outlet cover that we've been working on for the past two films. And in this film, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, adding the last of our features in this thing and move or rearranging some of the furniture in our um, feature manager design tree in order to achieve a different result. And then we're going to go through and we're going to change some of the display options. It's really nice to be able to get a model together, maybe send that off to a fabricator to uh, build for us. You know, the, the you know, fabrication may take place by referencing drawings or an STL file or some other format. But sometimes it's really kind of fun to dress up your model and make it visually appealing. So you can put it in marketing publications and other things. So we're going to do uh, that a little bit too. We're going to change some of our display options here and kind of show you something that might approach something that could be considered photo real. And uh, we'll cover some more of those elements in subsequent films. We've got a lot of small little things we can do here to enhance that a little bit better. So, rearranging the furniture. First of all, let's take our shell we're going to change out a little bit. Instead of an eighth of an inch, let's make that a sixteenth of an inch. So, 0 0.0625, green check mark. What that does is it makes the walls a little bit thinner and kind of makes this hole stand out a little bit better. Rearranging the furniture. We can take our elements in here if it makes sense. And we can rearrange our furniture a little bit. We can take that chamfer and move it behind the cut extrude too. You probably don't want to, you know, keep these as their default uh, names here. We did change the base name, but this should be called probably the outlet hole. And it's always a good idea to rename your features if you can. Sometimes it isn't uh, always convenient to do so, but if you get a very robust model, if you get a model with a lot of different elements in there, sometimes it's a lot easier to navigate these by renaming your features and putting your features into different folders but we will cover that in uh, subsequent films we'll keep the chamfer in the shell as they are but if we want to take that chamfer and move it on top of the you know the outlet holes it really doesn't affect anything however if we were to take the shell and move that around that does change things if we take that shell and put that in front of the outlet holes all of a sudden the shell does not take in consideration the outlet holes and so now we have a model that's even less robust than what we had before. So subsequently, you know, we can take that uh, that shell and actually put it in the very bottom of our feature manager tree. So now it takes into consideration not only our outlet holes, but our uh, our hole wizard hole, or actually our screw mounting hole. So if it makes sense, we can rearrange the furniture. And we can rearrange the furniture by minimizing the amount of features that we have in our feature manager design tree. And uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. It just needs to make sense. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind here. So let's add a rib to this. What we want to do is we want to make this a little bit more robust. We're going to add a rib to the left and right and top and the bottom. The way we do that is we're going to click on this surface. And the thing about SolidWorks is we're not necessarily confined to the front, top, and right plane now to draw, to uh, sketch on something. If we want to model something, we use any surface as long as it's flat and sketch in that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click this as our surface, go to sketch, and we're going to draw a line because the rib feature relies on a line. We're going to click on the quadrant of the edge of that circle up here and go to the midpoint of that edge over here. Because those two elements are fully defined, this line that we just drew is fully defined. Go to features, go to the rib feature up here. And if we just stick with the default settings, uh, the thickness being in the center, that's probably okay. If it doesn't say the sixteenth of an inch, let's go ahead and put that in. 0 0.0625. But let's do this. Let's change the material orientation. We don't want, and if you can see this, I have a sketch relation that's kind of uh, in the way there. But you see the arrow is kind of pointing off to the side. What we want to do is we make sure that rib is going down to the material and not to the side. The way a rib works it's going to take a line, add a thickness to that line, and then go down in the direction we tell it to, and stop when it runs into a surface. If it never runs into a surface, uh, you know, the feature will fail. So we want to make sure that that points down. So let's point that thing down. If it isn't pointing down, you can always reverse the direction by clicking in this box called Flip Material Side. So that's what we want, sixteenth of an inch. It's going in the right direction. We do want to add a draft angle, so let's go ahead and click on Draft, on and off. Type in about three or four degrees, whatever you think might be good. What that's going to do is it's going to allow it to draft going down. It's going to be a little bit thicker on the bottom than it is on top. And that would be something that would be consistent with the plastic mold. So I'll click on the green check mark. And there we have a partial rib. 
instead of doing additional rib elements here let's go back and edit this rib right click in that sketch if you right click and go to this element up here called edit sketch let's go into that let's draw some more lines in the same manner that we did before both top bottom as well as on the right green check mark here and then to rebuild go up to the top uh, up here in your menu bar go to rebuild now we have ribs all over the place pretty cool visualization let's change some of our display states or uh, some of our display values so we can go to our display manager down here and that gives us the ability to check uh, you know uh, our view appearances our view decals and our scenes lights and cameras we're not going to get in that much detail here we will with a different film but what we can do is we're going over here to our display pane and we're going to add some elements in here too if we have separate bodies within this part this would be good we can hide and show that we'd also uh, change the display mode of those different parts what we can change here is our appearance and transparency if we want we're going to change to save the transparency for a different film but let's change the appearance we can change appearance up here by uh, clicking on that uh, that icon going to appearance and changing its color this is going to be a very general change up here because this is at the top of the feature manager design tree it's going to change everything that's below that if we were to go down here and change the appearance down here, perhaps make this green, we could do that too. So now this trumps that. So for the outlet holes, the inside of the outlet holes, those are going to be green. I don't know if you want to do that or not. If you don't like that, you could always remove appearance by first uh, left clicking on it and then going to the shortcut menu to the right of that and go ahead and uh, remove the appearance. Material. Let's select the material. Go to edit material. Um, you may uh, it may default by putting you into steel. Let's scroll down to plastic and choose PVC rigid plastic. Go to apply and then close. What that does is automatically change it to the default uh, color of that plastic. Well, let's go ahead and change that back to uh, maybe a different color, perhaps green this time. And green check mark. Let's go over here and do some scenes. We can approach scenes by going up here to our display manager. We could also go down o over here to our um, our scenes tab on this side, and instead of appearance, let's scroll down and go to scenes, go to studio scenes, and perhaps choose something like the reflected floor checkered. We could do traffic lights; it puts a floor in there. A couple different ways we could do it: we could double click in here, or we can drag it out over here, and it puts it in there. But the problem with that is it really doesn't show; it kind of shows a grayscale background. So we need to do something a little bit extra. If we go uh, from the Heads Up Toolbar, instead of the Task Pane, this being the Task Pane over here, if we go to the Heads Up Toolbar and go over here to Review Settings, we can make some additional changes over here that uh, enhance the visibility of our object, of our model that we're drawing. So we want to choose Real View Graphics. That will add the floor down here and the reflection on that floor from our scene. Go to, into a Perspective View so that the back of our outlet is a little bit shorter and it looks like it's further away, it looks like it's falling away and getting further, uh, getting smaller as we um, get further away from it. Now one thing you might want to add too is ambient occlusion. What that does is add some shadows to it. And that will help dress up your model. Let's do one more scene with scenes. Let's go to presentation scenes and maybe do something different. Perhaps a kitchen, courtyard, uh, factory setting and you have the ability to, and we will cover that in subsequent films, you have the ability to add some scene uh, image backgrounds as you see fit too. You can download those, uh, those off the internet. So I think that's enough for our outlet. Thank you for joining me. Please join me for other films.